Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is CJ. I want to welcome you guys back to episode 11 of the Innovator Marine 75 EXT refilled. And once again, if you're new to the channel or if you just stumbled across this video, it's a full playlist. So make sure you check through the playlist on the channel, catch up on episodes 1 through 10, and get caught up on everything that's happened so far. Last episode, quick recap we finally did a full water change on the system, got everything purged and ready to go and added livestock to the tank so that's pretty much gonna be the trend over the next few weeks adding fish coral cleanup crew you name it we're finally gonna turn this cycling system into a live reef tank that's right so last episode first fish we're going in this episode we're gonna talk about the first online order of fish reloading the qt tank that's right guys we are going for round two and adding life to the system now, as you guys know, this is the comeback build. Also meaning I've been at the game for around three years. I have not ordered a fish online in a little longer than that. So, you know, it's really interesting seeing how this would go. I put in two separate orders, two separate companies, because I'm really specific with the stock list plans for this tank. And, you know, after hunting around the LFSs locally, I figured I was not going to be able to locate all the fish I really wanted. So, First stop was going to be Live Aquaria. And as you guys can see, opening the box, this is footage, you know, fresh unboxing, just opened it, just looking at the fish for the first time, me and you together and the camera. And unfortunately, we had one DOA. Uh, the next fish I picked up was Lively and Will in the bag, which was a good sign. And then the second fish I picked up was also Lively and Will in the bag. So I'm thinking, hey, we are good. We are two for three. And then unfortunately, fourth fish pretty much was on his last leg. Heavy breathing in the bag. It just was not looking like he had a good trip. So we're pretty much 50% on the first online order. Now, the good thing is Live Aquaria does have DOA guarantees. So I was able to put a report in and get credited for this. I just kind of, it kind of sucks getting your hopes up, you know, waiting up, making sure that you're off work to get this live shipment and having the fish come in the bag just not in good shape so we're going to try again round two with a separate company and this is going to be with blue zoo now I was not familiar with these guys uh, when you search for a fish online it gives you results normally live aquarium is the first one because they're like the walmart of fish online orders uh, but if you go a little deeper in the search list you will find different options so I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, this package came in well. They include an acclimation kit, which Lavacore did not. Uh, they also, you know, it looks like a well-packaged thing. So I gotta tell you, right out of the box, right out of the bag, instant colors, instant, you know, just life in each bag. And I can't lie to you guys, I was definitely, uh, definitely pleasantly surprised by my second order. It was very encouraging. The first one made me really not want to order fish online again. So it's definitely a difference in either quality or the housing of these fish between the two places I ordered. I'm really not sure, but I will tell you uh, the overall smell of the water in each bag was a little different. Lava Courier had a little dirtier smell. Um, really not sure what they're doing over there, honestly, but uh, the Blue Zoo team, whoever you are, you guys did some, some great work on this shipment. So I wanna make sure I share this because for those ordering online, Hey, I'm not doing a complete bashing video, but, you know, 50% life versus 100% life, you can't really, you can't really compare. So when it comes to my acclimation plans, um, I don't really stick to what the rules are in the shipment. Uh, I usually float these guys, temperature acclimate them, pop the bags and drop the fish right in. You know, after a long trip, you know, ammonia in the bag and all kinds of things in there that are going to be toxic you know as far as ph changes as soon as the air touches it and it's just all the bad stuff that can happen i just find that this is just a quick and painless you know rip the band-aid off get them out of the nasty travel water into the fresh qt water in the dark you know as soon as possible and you know this worked out perfect for me i'm not sure what plans you do with your fish drip acclimating them or not but i've never really done that i've always kind of popped and dropped them this time, instead of doing it into the main display, I'm doing it in the QT tank. So I just kind of want to share that with you all as far as my acclimation plans. Now, I did want to mention some quick last minute updates to the QT. 
Well, I had a master plan of Tupperware containers, sand, nice and neat and compartmentalized. Unfortunately, you know, a few grains of sand on the glass completely fooled the new additions. These guys were in the tank. They could not figure out where or how to bury themselves. So we had to ditch the plan. You know, it was a last minute decision. Notice these guys looking a little more stressed. So let's alleviate that stress, dump the sand out in the tank, and just kind of let these guys be able to find somewhere to be able to sleep at night or during the day, you know, until they're ready to come out. So for anyone that, you know, did plan on wanting to purchase rasses, especially ones that bury themselves in the sand, just keep that in mind. You know, some people have used Tupperware containers and it worked. For me, didn't. So just be mindful and be flexible enough. Reach your arm in there, dump it out. It's not ideal, but you can always siphon this out later, remove it, add to it. Main goal is getting these guys comfortable enough to do exactly what this guy's doing. Poke his head in the sand, you know, He's late for the bus, alarm clock went off late, everyone's been out swimming, and he's just now waking up. So that's the interesting part about these rasses. They all are from different places, different time zone, different everything. And it's, their, it's like they're on their own little biological clocks. So the goal is during this QT and quarantine system is just to try to get everyone on the same page, everyone waking up at the same time. So that way, you know, when it comes to maintenance and feeding, they can all get the same treatment. So after hours of waiting, finally got all these guys awake, swimming in the same clip, the same view, and day one of the Observation QT tank. So this is going to be the official RAS gang of the 75 EXT. Missing one RAS on my wish list is going to be the Radiant RAS, which brings us to six total. I have, I'm going to plan on having five RASs that bury themselves in the sand, which matches my Aquascape plans. Plenty of sand bed for these guys to bury themselves with one rash that will hide himself in the rock work, which I can accommodate. And one thing I also want to mention is going to be the size of these fish. I purposely ordered all smaller rashes for two reasons. One, it's much easier to, you know, house this many fish with them being smaller in the 20 gallon QT and also should help with aggression without one being a humongous, you know, shark in the tank and everyone else being babies. I'm gonna give you guys a quick up close look at each fish. Uh, we're gonna start off with the green chorus rise. I've had these guys in my last two systems, uh, the green and the yellow chorus rise together. Now, because they're kind of very similar shaped and size and all of that, there is some small bickering and battering and you know, a little aggression amongst each other, but nothing too out of control, nothing too crazy that makes me feel like I can't house these guys together again love the play of colors off each other the vibrant green and the bright yellow and they're not even in the need to main tanks you know blue lights this is just plain cheap led qt lights and these guys look amazing uh, then we're also going to include the pink scarlet rice this is kind of a plain mystery rice looking kind of fish you know one third of the price definitely the same swimming and movement definitely going to love the way he looks and then we're also going to include a leopard rise. This is my first time keeping a leopard rise. This is something I wanted to add to my experience, you know, seeing if I can get these guys to get along with everyone else in the tank, seeing if I can get them to eat, seeing if I can get them to, you know, grow and become a nice specimen for me. Another new fish is going to be the dusky rise. Interesting, this and the leopard rise are two fish that can morph and should morph between becoming a juvenile and an adult fish. So with them now being a black and white tail, it definitely adds a different change of pace color wise in the system. And I'm really looking forward to it. Now I gotta tell you guys, this is round two in the QT process for me. The first round of fish was eight fish total that came from the LFS. I was able to watch these guys eat in person at the LFS. These fish being shipped, I have no idea what mental state they're in. So. I'm going to try to offer them a little bit of everything, you know, starting off with new life spectrum pellets, uh, then, you know, following that up with the same shrimp flake food, and then eventually the frozen refrenzy nano food. So those are the three foods I have available that I am feeding the main display. Those guys were eating it. It'll be great if I can have everyone eating the same kind of food. But as you can tell, some are going for pellets, some are going for flakes. Some are going for frozen and some are not touching anything. You know, I've noticed each fish eats something, which is a good thing. And then I've noticed the next time I try it, the same fish not eat something. So 
this is going to be a process and the beautiful thing is with this being in a small closed you know environment i'm able to really kind of keep a close eye on who's eating and who's not and i can try to adjust my game plan which is probably going to end up including probably some live brand shrimp or copa pies or something just to make sure everyone is eating until i can get them trained over the next few weeks to be able to eat everything else so you know with all of these feedings it includes polluting the water and messing up the water quality so if you guys remember the first time around this tank was set up from scratch it was not cycled and i really went through a lot of water management water changes every other day every day you know at the very beginning because of ammonia well i let this system run fishless for the last three weeks between batches and I think that's gonna help me out a lot. Uh, I didn't notice any ammonia spike when I first added these guys, which is great. So all I'm doing now is just small water changes to help you know, reduce the leftover waste. So as I see food building up from my failed attempts of feeding, you know, I give it time, see if they're gonna peck at it. If not, quick five gallon water change to get in here and siphon out things is gonna be the name of the game. And I'm gonna monitor the quality of the water you know, with water changes. So. Eight fish ran through here the first time. Only having five fish this time, I think is gonna end up working out for me. Except when you're sucking in the sand bed and you think that you sucked up one of your fish. Man, you gotta be careful with rises. I'll tell you guys, uh, an experience I had in the JBJ45 actually was siphoning the sand bed and stabbed a ras and killed it. So this time I was just trying to suck up some poop or I thought it was poop. And it may have been a fish's tail, I'm not sure. Had a little mini panic attack. I thought I sucked up my expensive leopard rice. And fortunately, after taking apart everything, you know, nothing was found. Didn't see anything in the poles and the piping. And after going through and digging up all the rasses in the sand, everyone was accounted for. So it's time to continue the water change. So, you know, it was a funny little lesson to remind me of maintenance with rasses in the system. You probably don't want to do it while they're sleeping and buried in the sand bed. If they are, don't touch it. If you see them out swimming around, you know, that's when you have your opportunity to safely siphon things. So that's pretty much going to be the name of the game. You know, feeding these guys, getting them to eat, you know, monitoring the water quality, making sure no ammonia spikes, you know, water changes frequently as needed. Now, I also want to mention it's going to be my first attempt at medicating fish in my observation tank. Now the first round of fish came from the LFS, which I know uses therapeutic amounts of copper and Prozzi Pro in their systems. After speaking to them, I got the full rundown. So I felt comfortable just observing those fish. This time around, fish coming from two different places. You know, some of the water not smelling as good from one place. I'm just not sure what the process is. So just to make sure we're good, we're gonna go ahead and treat them for any kind of parasites. At least the safest way that I, that I found from researching especially with it being grasses, not being able to use copper, at least, you know, not safely for all of them. And I figured this is gonna be my first attempt at treating anything, might as well go with Prozzi Pro. So we're gonna go two rounds of that, uh, one dose per week, or smaller doses between water changes just to kind of keep it available in the water. And we're gonna go from there. So the good news is, regardless of these guys coming from online or from multiple places, and the QT themselves, they look great. You know, the colors look good. No visible damage, spots, parasites that I can see on them yet. No issues breathing. You know, once we get the feeding situation worked out, I think we may have a successful round two, you know, quarantining for the system. So I'm excited to see these guys kind of growing out, you know, in the QT and in the main system. And that's pretty much gonna be the game plan. You know, I'm gonna try to QT these guys for at least two or three weeks i'm going to see if i can make it that long without you know jumping the gun and really just seeing if any issues arise and so far so good guys so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video i swear this one kind of focus in on the quarantine this time if you look behind me you will notice corals in the display that's right if you follow me on instagram you know i've had corals in here for a while now and i'm going to be adding more this weekend so just stay tuned make sure that you know you follow me on ig if you want the latest updates if not don't worry it's coming to youtube we have plenty of videos left to come uh apex video is going to be coming uh, we're going to definitely talk about the corals in the system 
uh, the coral dips, you know, my process, everything that comes with just turning this into a real life reef tank. So I'm excited. I'm really happy to be back in the hobby. And this is what it's all about. Building the tank for weeks and weeks and weeks. And finally being able to turn it into a living reef tank. So at this point, it's time to get out of here, guys. So if you liked it, you know what to do. And as always, hey, you guys like, comment, subscribe. You guys keep doing what y'all do. Y'all be easy and happy reefing.